Eklovia stayed low in the grass. Before him, his father, the hunter, moved quietly. He held a bow and arrow. Then, he saw it. A few meters in front there was a rabbit. It was drinking water. Eklovia's father put an arrow in the bow. Eklovia took a deep breath. He tried not to move, but it was hard. He moved, and the grass made a sound. The rabbit turned and saw the hunter. It ran away. Eklovia's father shot the arrow, but it did not hit the rabbit. The hunter turned around. He looked very angry. Eklovia, I know you are there. Come out. Eklovia walked out. He felt bad. His father would hit him for what he did. But instead, the man looked happy. You want to be a hunter, don't you? Yes, I do. That is a shame. It is a difficult way to make money. He looked where the rabbit had been. We will have nothing to eat tonight. I'm sorry, father. But I will become a hunter. And I will catch rabbits every night. Don't be sorry. But promise me you will not become a hunter. You should be a builder. There will always be work then. I promise, father. But Eklovia was bad at keeping promises. As he grew up, he tried everything, building, making knives, even sending messages. He grew strong and fast. At night, he went into the forest and practiced moving quietly. Eklovia understood that he did not want to be a hunter. Really, he wanted to be an archer. He loved the sound of shooting arrows. He watched his father do it all the time. He could never use the bow himself, of course. Several times, Eklovia found some wood and made his own bow, but each time his father found the bow and broke it. When he became an adult, Eklovia traveled to the capital city. His father had a friend there. The friend said Eklovia could work as a builder for him. But Eklovia did not go there and instead went to the castle. I must see Dronacharya. Dronacharya was the archery teacher for the king and his family. He was the most famous archer in the whole country. Eklovia did not think Dronacharya would meet him. He was too important to meet someone like Eklovia. But Dronacharya wanted to know who this strange man was. What do you want? Please, I want you to be my teacher. I will study day and night, and I will do everything you say. Dronacharya looked at him coldly. You know the laws of the country. I am the teacher of the princes and kings, and I cannot teach my art to anyone else. If I teach you, you might become as strong as the princes and kings. That is not good. Promise me you will not bother me again. I promise. But as we know, Eklovia was bad at keeping promises. He thought the tall, powerful Dronacharya was amazing. In his heart, he had already decided that Dronacharya was his teacher. He picked up the dirt that Dronacharya had stood on, and from the dirt he made a small statue of Dronacharya. You will be my teacher, he said. Eklovia went and worked as a builder. He saved money and bought a bow and arrow. Every afternoon he went and stood by the castle walls. In the garden of the castle, Dronacharya taught the prince's archery. Eklovia could hear his words over the wall. He shot arrows into a tree and took Dronacharya's advice. The advice was for the princes, so it was difficult. In the daytime, Eklovia grew strong in his job, and at night, he went into the forest and hunted small animals. Every night, before going to sleep, he prayed to the statue of Dronacharya. Eklovia became better and better at archery. When he was in the forest at night, he could hear an animal move behind him and shoot an arrow into its heart. People began to talk about the strange man, who was so good with a bow and arrow. Still, he did not become rich or famous, because he had no teacher. 
Some people said that Eklavia was even better than the princes and kings at archery. Prince Arjuna heard this and decided to go and find the man. He had heard that he practiced in the forest at night, so he went there to find Eklavia. You are very good at archery. Eklavia saw that it was the prince and jumped. Your Majesty. Arjuna smiled. Do not worry. I am not here to hurt you. I want to see how much you have learned. Let us have a competition. Arjuna was sure that he was a better archer. His teacher was Dronacharya. But when they started shooting arrows, Eklavya was much better. Arjuna got angry, and he couldn't hit a lot of the targets. Eklavya hit everyone easily. Who taught you? shouted Arjuna. My teacher is Dronacharya. This made Arjuna even more angry. He took Eklavya to the castle and went to Dronacharya's room. The man was asleep, but Arjuna woke him up, shouting, What is this? This man tells me that you are his teacher. You taught this man and now he is better than me. You broke the law. Dronacharya yawned and looked at Eklavya with his cold eyes. I know this man. He came to the castle years ago and asked me to be his teacher. I told him no. Teacher, Eklavya said. I stood by the castle walls every day and heard your words. I built a statue from the dirt you walked on, and I prayed to it every night. You are my teacher, even though you did not know. Please don't be angry. Arjuna was white with anger. Dronacharya looked at Eklavya for a long time and said, Well, a student must pay his teacher. It is the law of the country. You have taken my words, but you have not paid me. Of course. I will do anything. Dronacharya laughed. Then cut off your finger. On your right hand. Without his finger, Eklavya would not be able to shoot arrows. Arjuna was very happy about this. Without waiting, Eklavya said, Of course. Do you have a knife? He cut his finger off right there, in his teacher's bedroom. Then he thanked Dronacharya and the prince and left. Without archery and without his finger, Eklavya could not live in the capital city. So he returned to his hometown. The people there had heard stories about him. They could not believe that he cut off his own finger. Why did you do it? They asked. Because my teacher told me to. Eklavya sat in the street and people gave him money. He talked to people about his story. They thought it was interesting and sad. People came to visit him and to hear his story. You are the best student to ever exist, a man told him. You show us how to be good students. People forgot that Eklavya had been an archer. Instead, they remembered him for his message, how to be a good student. He could not be a hunt or an archer, but he did not worry. He traveled through the country and showed students everywhere that they should listen to their teachers.